Hey everybody, Joe here coming to you from Arches National Park. We've got a, some great image demonstrations to share with you and the first one I'm going to share with you is a panoramic stitch that I did just the other day. So a storm had come through and then passed and the sky opened up, it was blue skies but behind us were dramatic clouds and phenomenal scenes. Now this is going to be a big panoramic. You can always crop later but you can't uncrop if you didn't capture it in the first place so that's important. So let's go ahead and stitch the entire thing together in Lightroom and then we'll see what pieces of it we really don't need to make it a better composition. Let's take a look. Hey there, Joe Brady back with you. And today we're going to take a look at a big panoramic stitch. In fact, here's uh, the, the panels that are in it. So here is the furthest right. And then moving left from there, here's the entire panoramic. And first we're going to just make some adjustments to the middle. Now you can see that if we look at the far right, if you look at the histogram, it looks like it's a little underexposed. However, we had to expose for the middle. We had to maintain these gorgeous clouds here. And you can see the histogram up here. Uh, we got pretty close to pure white. So this was a good exposure. So let's take this middle shot and make our adjustments first, and then we're gonna stitch it together. But what we're gonna see after we're done is that perhaps we have too much in this panorama, and we're gonna to have to decide how to pare it down to make it a more effective photograph. So first of all, the whites look pretty good. Let's bring the shadows just all the way up. That helps. Uh, let's add some saturation, and yeah, that's more like it. Uh, this, by the way, is an Arches National Park. And what we did see was that the, the rocks were a little darker than normal because it had just recently rained. In fact, if you look right down here, you can see some of the wet in the red sand there. So let's add a little bit of texture and clarity. And then we'll add a little bit of vibrance to bring up the blues. And as we see that, probably the foreground is going to need even a little bit more saturation. And let's bring the highlights down a little so that we can open up the entire exposure. All right, that's looking a little better. I will fine tune a little later. So let's uh, select the rest of the images in the stitch. And I'm gonna hold down both Command and Shift or Control and Shift on a PC so that we can get, in this case, all seven of the shots that made up the stitch. Then we're going to click Sync down here at the bottom and we just want it to sync everything. Everything we just did to that one frame, we want it to do to all of them so they have exactly the same edits made to them. So after that's done, we could take a look through, and that's looking pretty good. Yes, even those ones that look dark are looking really nice right now, and there is a lot of real interesting uh, information, a little brush and scrub going on in the foreground. All right, so there's all our shots. Let's stitch it together. And to do that in Lightroom, we simply go up to Photo, Photo Merge, Panorama. Now, as it's starting to do its thing, you're going to probably find that 95% of the time you're going to want to use cylindrical as the projection. Spherical will compress things vertically a little bit. And perspective is generally only going to be used when you're in an urban environment, so you have buildings coming down the side on either side of you or if you're shooting a really super wide angle shot. All right, so you can see here's our entire image uh, stitched together. Now you see these little bit of curves that the software has added in. Well, if you were hand holding it, that would be necessary. This, however, was shot on a tripod on a nodal rig. So we're going to just completely straighten this out by pushing the boundary warp all the way to the right to fill the frame because that, that curvature was not really there. Then we just click on Merge and Lightroom does its magic, stitching all these images together. And by the way, in Lightroom, after you stitch a panoramic, it's still a raw file. You can still change everything you've done. So here is the full stitch of all of our images put together, and it's mighty impressive. And in fact, let's hit the I key on the keyboard, and we'll get the specs on the image. And you can see that this is now 14,830 pixels across. What does that mean? Well, in easy terms, it means you can make an eight or nine foot wide print of this, and the resolution would hold up just fine. In fact, let's just take a quick peek up close, and you'll see what I mean. So we haven't even applied any sharpening yet, but right, the stuff right at our feet is sharp. And as we come back to the rocks. Now, this happens to be shot with a Fuji camera. And for some reason in Lightroom, the Fuji cameras do come in not sharpened really. So generally I find always having to bring the sharpness up about the midpoint over in the detail. 
And that's good. But when you do that, remember in Lightroom, when you sharpen, it sharpens everything. So the trick is to use the masking slider. We just want to sharpen all the edges on the rocks and the trees. So click on the masking slider, hold down the Alt key, and that turns it white. Then start dragging it to the right until things like the sky are no longer being sharpened. Anything that's black is no longer being sharpened. The edges of the clouds and the edges of the rocks, that's fine. All right, that looks a lot better. So we hit the space bar, and now it's looking pretty good. So there's some other things we want to do to bring up the colors in this image. Let's go to HSL, Use Saturation Luminance, and start with Luminance. I'm going to click on the targeted tool here and click on the rocks. I want to bring these up a little bit. So if I click and I push, you can see it makes those lighter or darker based on the colors in it. So let's make that a little bit lighter. And now let's go to Saturation and put some more of that saturation back in. So we'll click on there and push up. And you can see we could also make it black and white, which would be weird, as with too much saturation. So let's make it commonsensical. And again, as I mentioned, I had rain here recently. You can see some of the wet, uh, wet sand down in here. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Let's go back to basic. Is there anything else we want to do here? Uh, shadows are all the way opened. We could bring the highlights down a little bit more, which would give us a little more room to open up and we can also increase the saturation a bit more. Okay, so here's our entire image, which is looking pretty good. However, let's look at it compositionally. Where do your eyes go? Well, the problem is we have these two big masses that are kind of overwhelming. And if you wanted the, the viewer to go to this subject back in here, we need to do something with both cropping and light. Now there's a lot going on here. A storm had just passed. You can see the storm clouds in the back. You can see the clouds over the mountains. You can see the storm over here. However, this is the primary formation in this particular shot. This one's interesting, but it's kind of amorphous, as is this one. So what can we do to make this a better composition and to guide the viewer's eye to the right place? Let's start by darkening these ones on either side. So we're gonna get the brush. And we're going to make sure Auto Mask is chosen. Get a nice big brush, and I'm going to come down here and select Show Mask Overlay. That just lets me see what it's getting. There we go. I'm just going to select this rock. I don't want to get the sky. And even the foreground a little bit. And that's good. And I'm going to hit O to hide overlay. And let's go up to Exposure and bring this down a little bit. I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to desaturate it a smidge. So what that does is it has the effect of making it less prominent. Your eye isn't drawn to it. Now, while we're at it, we can add some contrast, too. And let's see. I got a little dark in the foreground, so I'm going to hit the Alt key, and I'm going to take it out of the foreground here. I'm just going to make the rock darker. So the Alt turns that into a minus and allows you to subtract. Now, let's do the same thing over here a little bit. Let's hit New, and let's hit O again so we can see what we're selecting. Let's just darken this up a little bit. Not quite as much because it's already kind of dark. Okay, that looks good. Let's hit Done. Now, there's still too much of it. We're going to get the cropping in a, in a minute. But let's get some light going to our subject. So let's hit New. Let's get another brush. Hit New. Uh, let's turn off Auto Mask. Hit the O key again. And I'm going to just paint kind of a path up to our subject area, which is up in here. And also, I'm gonna use these brushes and this rock here to just help lead everything up to here. So let's hit O to hide that, and let's bring the exposure up. And we'll just keep bringing it up so that it looks kind of normal, looks like the sun is shining through there. And that looks good. Let's add some saturation back since we added the brightness. We brought the brightness up so much. And that's looking pretty good. Let's hit new again. Uh, and let's hit auto mask this time. And again, the O key for our overlay. Let's add a little bit more contrast into these pieces here, since they are the stars of the show. So again, O. And let's add some contrast. And maybe a little dehaze. That'll darken things up a little bit. Okay, so again, we've got this thing more interesting, but these things on either side are still too, too physically strong in the scene. They're overtaking your eye. Your eye is drawn to this. 
So let's get the cropping tool and see what we can do to not get rid of them, but make them less prominent. We can do that by cropping off. So we'll leave a little bit of the one on the left and we'll do the same on the right. Now, by the way, I have photographs of the one just on the right. There's actually one just out of frame and there's a formation inside. That's a separate photograph. And this one we want to kind of draw the viewer into our primary subject. So let's see if that's enough. Let's bring down the sky. I'm putting our grid line just along the top of the formation. And I really hate to cut out any of the bottom because there's so much interesting vegetation down there. Maybe a little bit more, well, maybe a little bit less actually of the left hand side. And let's hit enter. And I think that might have done it. That's making it much more interesting because now we have this thing on the left and on the right. But they more are visual blocks now. Now because of the light we've added, we've provided a path up the middle right to the formation. Let's actually, I probably could use a little less sky. Let's hit R again to bring the crop tool up. And just, we want to keep this cloud right here. Let's bring that down and hit enter just a little bit there. And then lastly, let's go into effects and let's add a vignette. So I'm going to go all the way and I'm going to make it less round, a little more defined into the corners. We'll feather it a little more. And now I'm going to back off the amount down to, oh, 12 or so, which is typically where I go. And looking pretty good. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command or Control apostrophe, which will create a virtual copy of this. And then I'm going to reset that so I can toggle back and forth and show you where we started and where we ended up. So I'm going to hit reset. So there's our stitch. Actually, that's actually the stitch before any of the, the basic edits we had done. In fact, to be fair, let me go back into one of our basic frames. Here, I'll choose this one here. And I will click on sync on everything but crop to that. So at least puts our original stitch back. So there's the raw stitch. Okay. So let's go to full screen with the F key. So there's our original stitch before we did any cropping. It's an interesting scene, no doubt. Maybe if we just took a little off the left and this was a really big print, maybe this thing could stay there. However, with our crop, we really transformed it into a completely different feel. Now, clearly this thing in the middle is the subject. Everything else is just subordinate to it. And this big thing here actually forms a physical block from you leaving the image. You could imagine yourself walking along this path here through this hard rock out to this formation, which makes it more interesting. You have all this interesting brush, interesting pine trees, interesting sage, all this interesting stuff in the foreground, but that eventually gets us back to here. If you consider that our original panoramic stitch was this before we did any edits. Then we come to here and now it's obvious where you're going to look. Your, your eyes are going to take you here. Yes, I might fine tune some of the colors. Actually, I think right here, uh, let's fix it. Right here got a little overly saturated. So let's come out of full. Let's get a brush. I'm not going to leave that there. We're going to fix it. So I hit overlay. We have auto mask on. For some reason, this one little piece got a little bit too saturated. So let's just make sure we get that. Yeah, that's a little too saturated. Actually, kind of in here is as well. Just those two sections for some reason. So we'll hit O to turn that off. Let's bring the saturation down. In fact, I'm even going to darken up those sections just a little bit. I think that's even a little bit better. A little bit of fine tuning. Let's go back to full screen. Yep, looks better because this is where we want the eyes to go. We have a path here leading. We have this on the right blocking us from leaving. We have this leading us in. And again, one last time, we started there with the entire panoramic shot. And we ended up there. Much more focused, much more clear what it is you're asking the viewer to look at. And a very interesting shot that really leads you in. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back with some more stuff from Arches National Park. Bye-bye.